wants to come out. We can't force him to come out. body's making all kinds of noises um, and he said it's hard for my body to learn new things so it wants to escape so his body's making all those 
noises, um, but that's not what he wants to do. And I asked him what we should do when he's doing all of that. And he says, help me go higher. It helps so much you know, to know that, I guess, from him, because otherwise it's like, yeah, we would never like keep him up on the wall. Like we, <laughs> we would like listen to what his body is yelling and screaming and like have him come down, which, you know, is kind of sad almost to think about like how much these kids are missing out on like what they actually want to do. Jordan, he's like the most mature 13-year-old I've ever met. What's happening on the outside really doesn't reflect what's going on on the inside. I think he's got a photographic memory because that's, you know, he'll watch these videos and just keep pausing them and replaying the same parts over and over again. And then on his little doodle board, he'll be like writing the credits and like drawing the picture. And he's, I think he's got like, you know, it all memorized. He's very courageously named his autistic side, the Rocky. He struggles to control that part. So what we're working on right now, basically, is helping him That's move incredible. from being very impulsive all the time and helping him become more purposeful. All right. Very good. Wow. How high could I go? I don't know. <laughs> so we do rap prompting method, which is what you see like on the letter board. Um, it's helping him find his inner voice. You know, for, for so long, like, nobody would have ever guessed, I think, believed in him that you know, he's got all this within himself and then here he is like just telling people about his dreams and like <laughs> you never would have guessed he'd be able to express that and then I always get like <laughs> teared up just like when I watch him because you know it's so beautiful to see what can actually come out. Jordan, you might think it's a little bit out of control in the beginning. You might not. I don't know. Okay, but this is what it's going to look like. You're going to put your hands down, and one foot goes up to you, G, and the other foot goes up to you, and it's a handstand. Okay? I want you to try. If we don't do it today, it's fine. When I see Jordan, I see that there's nothing physically wrong with his body, but he has disassociated from it like it's not his body. What I try to do is give him new and different physical experiences in the class because I think that his anxiety comes from not being grounded and not being balanced in his body.
Jordan shows a lot of immature behavior, but that's not who he really is. I think his body lags behind his mind and his body is struggling to catch up to his mind. So in class, we go back to a lot of basic movements for his body to keep challenging him and to help him reach his potential. The question was, I asked him, what does it mean to integrate? He says the word, I'm like, what does that mean? And he says... Did I get that right? Why? Yes. We're the opposite. I learn ideas slowly, but I learn a lot. That's funny, that's perfect to know, right? I didn't know what a tis, being autistic meant, but basically he didn't have the social skills to be able to be with friends. And he just did what made him comfortable. He needed to focus on one thing or he would just get overwhelmed, frustrated. And, you know, I do remember at some point when he was very young, I remember trying to do timeouts. And I think now, oh my God, you know, putting him in this little, gated thing, time out, and I'm thinking, wow. Um, you know, at that time I was trying to do mom the way that mom was supposed to be done. So when he was very little, you know, I was his nutritionist, I was his therapist, his mom. It keeps evolving, because I've always wanted him to be able to fully express himself. certain things that he wants to do each day like Mondays he wants to do his blog these are his goals he's very interested in being able to take care of his body more we're just going to start playing the keyboard because we just got a, a piano we do lots of puzzles where he'll sit down and be like purposefully doing a puzzle for you know two to three hours <laughs> When he started to talk and we went to a session with a professional who provides letter board and sort of helps us to move to the next stage with him, um, he didn't want to do a traditional lesson. He just wanted to talk to her about what his mission was and how to achieve it. So one of the first things he wanted to do was start a blog. When we do his blog, we sit down, I ask him what's it on, and he just writes. And I'm blown away every time at his ability to express himself, to fulfill on what he's up to, which is making a difference for other kids like him. Question. Last week you told me what it felt like to be integrated. I wanted you to tell me what it feels like not to be integrated. But you've said excited, and I know I want if you can describe more. Is it like a storm? Is it like something's broken? 
What's it feel like? Non-integration. Well, I think for lots of kids with autism, inside there's a battle going on. And with Jordan, I know it must be super frustrating for him because of how smart and intelligent he is. He's always struggling with the purity of his mind and the turmoil of his emotions. He started a sequence that's of all kinds of sign language from a video that usually takes like an hour to get through. And I he said, stopped. what do you want me to do about this when we were in the bathroom? And he said, stop me. But his body is freaking out because yeah. he can't finish what he started. Yeah. But so um, what his mom said was, is there's a whole sign language series, TV, or some kind of thing that he usually takes an hour for him to go through. And she stopped it because of here. So he's a little more stressed with that. And he asked her, uh, she said, what are you going to do about this? And he said, stop me from writing on my board. So his two sort of places he goes when he's stressed, the bathroom or writing on the board, have been taken out. So now he is really trying to actually focus on the activities completely 100%. You only have to do this a little. It's called mountain climber because it's as if you're climbing a mountain. Here are your hands on the mountain and you have to bend your knees real high to do a mountain climber. That's why they're called that knee to the elbow. Okay? Like that. Okay, so let's try. Hands down. Good job. Feet back here. Good. Knee to elbow. So we want your body to be as relaxed as the mind that's inside. You tell us what you like. Body mind integration is always a journey. It's a process where a person has to accept that their body and their mind are one thing, that they can't be separated. Jordan is a child and he's slowly becoming an adult. And as he grows older, that balance between the body and the mind is going to lead to a powerful maturity. Everything's the same. One, two, three, four,
us with? What I would say is one of his and probably a lot of autistic kids' abilities is they know what's going on with you. Um, being more connected, being more connected, being more connected. I think Jordan's most special quality is his ability to love no matter what. He's always looking to make a difference with others and, you know, that's the most, uh, you know, special thing to know that whatever we did, that's the kid that came out of it. The idea of like feeding him this purposeful action um, is so powerful, I find. It's like movement class here. You look at rock climbing, anything, something like clicks. Um, that's kind of building that inner muscle. All these kids with autism, I feel like they're just, they're, sh they're waking up the world to, to a new way of being and, and just like, a, like getting back to basics of relationships and love and, and caring for one another. Uh, well, like last week we're working on body weight activities and he's getting better at all of them. He's getting stronger um, and he's doing more repetitions. The big thing is we're hanging and teaching him different rock climbing moves where you hang and you hook your toe as a toe hook, where you press your legs against the wall when you're in an arete. You found my lit candle lighter? Okay, it's gonna work. We're gonna make it happen, okay? You did it with your right leg. Your right leg's a nice strong leg. We're gonna do it with the left and it's gonna work. That's it, here. That's it, here, that arm will be easy. Ready, one, two, three, jump up, go. And up, oh yes, really good. Oh. Right, he's expressed this desire to want to go and climb in Alberta someday. He's actually chosen a place where he wants to climb, which is well known for climbing and, and, uh, and, and very advanced. You can say things to yourself and say, I want to do something myself. But when you speak it out into the world, it becomes real. And I think that's what he's doing. He's speaking out into the world the things that he wants for himself to make them real. Even if they're far off. Huge. One person on that leg. Yes. Okay. That's it. Oh, good. Lean forward, Jordan. Don't lean back. Good. world for autistic children has extremely low expectations of who they are, what they can do, what they can be. But I'm guilty of that. One of my thoughts was that Jordan would be somebody that I was going to have to support through past my lifetime. You know, that's an example of low expectations. He's showing me that he's going to be okay. He's going to become known in the world. <laughs>